Hi there, welcome to Create with Copper. I'm Teresa from Lily Tree, and today I'm going to show you the cool technique of etching. For this technique, I'm going to be using ferric chloride. You'll also need a container to put it in, some duct tape and preferably a polystyrene block, some wire wool, a permanent marker or permanent ink pad and stamps, some solvent useful, a cocktail stick, gloves and safety glasses, and one millimetre thick copper sheet or blanks. You can use thinner, but you just have to be a bit more careful about how long you leave the copper in the etchant. So if you've not come across ferric chloride before, there are a few useful things to know. It is used in metalwork and for etching circuit boards, so you'll find it in those sorts of suppliers. It is a chemical, so think safety. It actually isn't too bad as far as chemicals go, but read the warnings on the back carefully and heed them. It also stains. It's bright yellow and I don't fancy my chances of getting the stain out. So it's another good reason to wear protective gloves, old clothes and cover everything in your workspace in the vicinity that you don't want stained. And with apologies to any chemists out there, Here's my hopefully correct explanation of what it actually is. Each molecule consists of one atom of iron and three atoms of chlorine hooked onto it. That bridge between them is made of two electrons for each chlorine atom. Now the iron atom is stable with eight electrons. So the etching action is basically the ferric chloride heading up to the copper to rob it of a couple of electrons. This also explains why it reduces in effectiveness over time. It's recommended to keep the used ferric chloride separate to the new. In order to create the design, you need to mask off any areas you don't want to be etched. There are several methods to do this. You can draw the design with permanent marker. You can cut shapes from sticky sheet and stick those on. You can stamp a design with permanent ink or print the design on press and peel film and transfer it to the copper. I'm going to be drawing designs and stamping today. Before you start, you need to prep your metal. I've given these blanks a good wash and just gone over gently with some wire wool. Now that they're clean, I don't want to be handling them too much and introducing oil onto the surface again. So I'm going to put them onto some duct tape. You can use parcel tape, but I've just found duct tape is the stickiest uh, tape I could find. It also means that by putting them on there, you're protecting the back from any etchant. So I'm going to start with one of the discs. Just pop it on in the corner and just make sure it's down on there firmly. Just rub the back gently, make sure it's fully on there. Now drawing your designs is great if you're a doodler or into your zentangle, but don't feel like you've got to be a great artist for this. A few marks on the copper can be amazing in terms of the results that you get. The one thing to remember for etching is where normally you'd be shading areas to recede into the background to create darkness. Those are the areas you're masking off on the copper and will be most forward on your piece. And if you're then antiquing it, they'll be the pieces that stay the copper colour. So for this particular doodle, I wanted to create some kind of tree-like branches. Now normally you'd be crossing those over and shading the background. But in this case, actually, I need to make the branches black and anything that I'm not then drawing on will be the background. So on the copper, you need to use a permanent pen because it's going in liquid, basically. If you don't, that will dissolve. It won't be masking off the area. And I'm just going to follow those lines 
I'm just going to start by drawing the basic shapes on there. I can then thicken up the branches once I've got everything on there. And then when I'm drawing one of the branches that's going behind, I need to break the line so that it's shown to be going behind there, not just straight through it. And now that I've got all the basic branches in, I'm just going to thicken those up, starting from the very tips. That's going to be the thinnest bit. And then working my way down, getting gradually thicker and creating a nice base so they look tree-like and natural. Now I think I'm quite happy with that as a design. Now the other thing that I need to do is go around and colour the edges to protect those from the etchant, otherwise it can eat into the sides. So I'm just going to draw around the disc, just make sure all the edges are covered. Make sure it's all black. It's all covered. Oh, and if you do happen to make a mistake like that, it's quite handy that I've done that because that's what the solvent was for. I've got the blending solution for uh, alcohol inks, but anything that dissolves alcohol inks or permanent ink will do. Just dab a small amount onto a bit of cloth and then just wipe the area gently that you want to remove the ink from and then basically clean that area up again and replace any lines that you want on that particular bit of the design and that's my drawn design complete I'm now going to move on to a stamped design and as before I've got the disc cleaned up and put on a bit of the duct tape and I've got the stamp on a block here that I want to use and some permanent ink. Ideally I'd be using a rubber stamp but the design I want happens to be one of the clear stamps. So I'm just going to ink up the stamp Let's make sure it's fully covered. And then this stamp is symmetrical, so I'm going to carefully try and get it as central as possible on the disc. And ideally, you want to press down hard enough so that it's in contact with all of the disc, but not too hard thing with the clear stamps is that they do tend to squidge a little bit which is why rubber stamps are better for this but we'll tackle that when we see what we've got oh that's not too bad but there are some areas that I then want to go in and just touch up with the permanent pen So using the pen you can just go over any areas that aren't covered as much as you'd like. Or you could add in detail, so stamp a basic shape and then add detail to it with the pen if you wanted to. And once you're happy that all of the lines are thick enough, there's enough coverage there to be sure of 
holding up the etching action. That's your stamping design done. But don't forget to colour around the edges again as before. Now the last piece I want to show you is a piece that I'm doing for Halloween. It's another drawn design. I've completed the most part of it, but I think it could just do with a frame around the outside. Now this particular piece of copper is slightly beveled, so I'm going to use a piece of card. It's got the straight edge that I need and just hold that over the copper and then carefully draw along the edge. Once I've done that on all three sides, that's my frame drawn. Now this blank's also got a small loop at the top. That doesn't need to be etched away either, so I need to colour that in fully. and get right into that hole as well, so the edges are covered. Then of course I'll go around all of the edges. Now I've got all my pieces ready, I'm happy with the designs and I've stuck them all to a piece of duct tape. We now need to get the setup ready to do the etching. The idea is that we want to suspend the pieces upside down in the etchant. If you think about it, the etchant is busy eating away at the metal but it's creating debris as it goes which if they're the right way up, will fall into the crevices and prevent any further etching action taking place. Now the standard method to do this is to tape the pieces upside down, so extend this piece of duct tape and then just stick that to the sides of the container. But I found a handy little hint to use a bit of polystyrene, which obviously but is then keeping them upside down just under the surface of the etchant. So all you need to do is to take the pieces, get a piece of polystyrene that's small enough to fit into your container and just tape this on. There's no particular reason why I'm using such a small container. It's the bottom of a milk carton which means that I can dispose of it afterwards. But you can use a much larger container if you've got large pieces. And on one side of the float, I've extended the tape a little bit to create a tab. This will help when lifting to check the pieces. So I've got my setup here ready to go. I've got my gloves on and I've got my safety glasses on. Working on a tray with some newspaper on it. So I'm just going to pour some of the etchant into the container. in my float with my copper. This just then leaves leaving for some time. It depends how deep you want the etch as to how long to leave it. I'll probably check it after an hour, see how it's going. So it's now been two hours and I'm just going to use 
a cocktail stick just to check how deep that etch is. It's a bit difficult to see with all of the uh, etching on there. So just run the cocktail stick down the pieces. You can feel the ridges and that is fine. So I'll get those cleaned up, rinsed off and cleaned up. So here are the pieces after a rinse. As you can see, they've still got a fair amount of the uh, ink on there. You could take that off with the solvent, but it's probably going to come off as I clean them anyway. So I won't worry too much about it at this stage. Now this one, I'm really happy. The etch is quite deep. But my spider's web, I did make a mistake first time when, when I was drawing it and cleaned it off and I don't think I cleaned it up well enough. The etch has eaten into the design. But thankfully it's a spider's web so hopefully it'll add to the effect. We'll see when it gets cleaned up. So I'm just going to start the cleaning process with a wire brush. Just to see how far that takes us. And yeah, the ink is coming off at that. So I'm quite happy with that as a start point. Here's how the others are looking. And I'll just continue now. I'm going to patina them with some liver of sulphur and polish them up and then I can show you the finished result. And here they are patinaed. I'm really happy with the way that they've all come out, including the uh, spider's web. It uh, hasn't eaten too much of design away. It does just add quite nicely to the effect, I think. So these are now ready to make into whatever I want to uh, add them into. And that's etching. Hope you enjoyed that. If you like this video, please press the like button below, subscribe to my channel and head over to my blog for more hints, tips and projects. Thanks for watching. See you soon.